Hello physicists and welcome. In this session we'll be looking at uh, work, energy, with a particular emphasis on dissipated energy. Let's get started. And we know that uh, work is force times distance. The force needs to be applied in the direction of the distance or displacement. And work is a transfer of energy. Let's review with the uh, energies that we've been looking at. We have gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy, elastic potential energy, and dissipated energy. Let's review each of these. Gravitational potential energy is the energy of position. We can determine our gravitational potential energy by looking at mass times gravity times height. If we have any three of those, we can figure out the fourth variable. The most direct way of figuring out gravitational potential energy is multiplying mass times gravity times height. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. It's represented by the equation, our kinetic energy is equal to one-half mass times velocity squared. If we know any two of the three variables, we can figure out the third. The most direct way of figuring out kinetic energy is if we know both mass and velocity, one-half mass times velocity squared. Remember PEMDAS, we would do our velocity squared before the other operations. Elastic potential energy is present when we've either compressed or stretched something like a spring or rubber band. Our elastic potential energy is calculated from one-half times k, our spring constant, times x squared, the amount of stretch of our rubber band or spring from its neutral position. Please remember that x is not the length of the spring, but it is the amount that the spring or rubber band changes in length. If we know any of the two of the three values there, we can figure out the third. And our last uh, type of energy that we're considering in this class is dissipated energy. And you'll see the note, no sharing. Once energy ends up as dissipated energy, it's very difficult. And for our class, we're going to say there is no way of changing it back from dissipated energy into any of the other forms. Because uh, dissipated energy takes so many different forms, light, heat, sound, broken objects, there's no specific formula for dissipated energy. We know that the total energy in a system is the gravitational plus the kinetic plus the elastic plus dissipated energy. So to figure out dissipated energy, we would look at our total energy, take out what we know, and whatever's left over is our dissipated energy. So we could say our dissipated energy is equal to our total energy minus the energies that we know, minus gravitational, minus kinetic, minus elastic potential energy. And remember, we're measuring both work and energy in joules. Hey, so I'm doing work on a system, I increase the total energy in that system. It could go into gravitational potential energy. It could be elastic, sorry, kinetic uh, energy. Or elastic potential energy. Or any combination of the three. These particular energies can share their energies easily between the two. I can easily convert gravitational into kinetic, kinetic into elastic, and gravitational into elastic potential energy. If one value increases, the, uh, the value of the others decrease. Regardless of which it is, it can be easily converted from one type to another. Hey, but what about uh, dissipated energy? Dissipated uh, energy occurs if we create sound, if we have friction or heat created in our system, or if we break things. Notice that the arrows face only one direction. As our system uh, goes along and we have any of these types of forces, our dissipated energy gets greater, and our elastic, our kinetic, and our gravitational get less and less. Hey, so just a brief little uh, review here. We have four types of energy, gravitational potential, kinetic, elastic potential energy. Energy is easily uh, shared or um, exchanged between those. And the fourth type that we're looking at is 
dissipated energy. Dissipated energy grows with time as we lose energy and gravitational, kinetic, and elastic potential energy.